So Samuel is our next speaker, and he'll talk about it. Okay, so first of all, I would like to thank the organizers to uh, pulling this together. I think this is a very important topic. Uh, so I will talk about this uh, and more of this project, which is touching many of the things we have discussed. But now, I, today, I will talk about from the point of view of fair producibility. Uh, but before that, I will shortly tell what this is about, because it's important to understand what it is. So this started when I was posting in Lund. I was working with the solid state NMR exper ex uh, experts, mainly with Jack Ferrer and uh, Daniel Topkart. And they had this fancy new pulse sequence, which you can use to measure order parameters of lipid bilayers using uh, carbon-13 natural abundance. So before you need, need it labeled lipids and so on. Uh, so what is the order parameter for the lipid bilayer? So for each hydrocarbon segment of the lipid, you can measure this number, which is called order parameter. So this is the angle of the CH bond with respect to the membrane normal. And this is the ensemble average. So this is the average over the conformation is lipid molecule sampling. <coughs> It's well known that if you if you measure these order parameters for the acyl change you calculate from MD simulations, you get really good agreement, which is for many people this is well known, but for for example for the animal people this is actually quite convincing. So this is very good. It means that the, that the conformations of the acyl chains are correctly sampled. I wasn't very excited on this, but then when I was there, I realized something that you can actually measure these order parameters also for the clitoral backbone and the head pool, which I didn't realize before. So then I compared those to the experiments of the Berger model at the time, and the agreement was not that good, which means that in this model, the confirmation sampled by the clitoral backbone and the colon were not correct. I think even more important is that it turns out that uh, the order parameters of the head group, alpha and beta carbon, proportionally change when you add charges to the bilayer. So there's a re linear relation between the amount of charge in the bilayer and this order parameter, which means that you can measure uh, ion binding affinity using these order parameters. Because the order parameters depend on how much ions you have bound. Uh, the good thing is that we can directly compare this to the experiment. So we can directly compare the ion binding affinity and uh, between simulations in animal. So when I did this comparison the Berger model, it wasn't very good. So the figure is not very clear, but for me it was enough to say that the binding is, is, is too strong. So the cations are binding too strongly. Okay, so then I, okay, what I learned? I learned that this Berger model is not very good for the head group, this ion binding is not good. So what can I do? This was, at the time, this was a very widely well used model. So what can I do? I could make, write the publication, perfectly doable. Problem is that nobody would probably care. <laughs> because this is not uh, this is not real progress, it's just a negative result, which is fine, but I don't think it pushes much things forward. So the other option would be that I will take all the force fields we have, I will try to fix it, I will try to understand how this works, so on. So this is this was too much work. So uh, at the time, 2013, we had a lot of a lot of these discussions with uh, Marcus Smith and with another guy. How we should actually do science, and there were people saying all kinds of things. And uh, then I thought, okay, let's just do it. So, so we 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 did we tried a new way to do things. So why, why, how we started? So I wrote this kind of uh, manuscript telling what I have observed. We published in the, in, the, in the archive. Uh, then we launched this uh, open collaboration. So this the idea comes from Polymath project and uh, Linux collaboration and stuff like that. So we basically started a blog. We presented an open in invitation to the field to contribute, uh, give data, ideas, whatever you do. Uh, so everything is done publicly. So all the all the contributions are done publicly. Uh, the, if you contribute, you will be offered an authorship when we publish. The ownership is based on the on the on the on the final uh, self assessment. So if you think you should be there, you will be there. Yeah. So 
So, okay, I, I, uh, one thing I want to point out that because there are a little bit misconceptions what we are trying to do. We are trying to find amnesia simulation models of lipids which correctly describe biological error and membrane properties. We are not comparing force fields. We are not building data bank as a first goal. Okay, these are side side products which may be even more important than this. But this is the main goal. This is just because some people think that we're force field comparison people. Okay, so we started 2013, we have now 42 contributors who have contributed, we have published three papers, we have three manuscripts in writing. <laughs> these are the papers, these are the people who have contributed. I will quickly show, I will try to go fast because, um, so, I'll, so what do we get out from this kind of thing? We have actually a lot of data, these are just like very small fractions of the examples what we can learn. So these are the Head group order parameters for POPC. Uh, now you should see here with the blue shaded regions, you should see the experimental data. The simulation results are with the different colors, so they are pretty much all over the place. Uh, this is for the PS. This is the structures of the PS lipids from the different uh, forest fields. So, yeah, the data is a bit overwhelming over here. So we have also done this kind of quick, uh, like, the, this, this, this is a, we have a metric how do this which for field in terms of the structure of the hat groups and we can get this kind of like if you now if you're thinking like what, what which model you should use this could be useful. Uh, the iron binding was a very important thing. I don't have time to go to the details. The message is that in the cations are binding too strongly in all simulation models available. Sodium and uh, calcium are binding too strongly to lipid bilayers. Yeah, that this is the best plus. So you can see that everything, all the simulation models go something like this, and this is the experiment. Yeah, calions are binding too strongly. I, I don't have time for this, but I will show. Okay, we can also fix this. So we have also a new model which gives a good result because of the implicit <coughs> included electronic polarizability, but I just show this that we are not, we are also making actual progress. Okay, so I was asked to talk about the reproducibility, so I will go there now. And I was asked to give practical, practical examples where this has been a problem. We of course have it, because because we, we are looking at force fields which would actually work. So what happens is if we take force fields by other people, we try it, it would work. So if we, when we try this, we should actually make it correct. We should be yeah, doing it right. So then what happens is that you do it, you check if you got the same results as people before. Uh, if you don't, you have a problem if you do it, it's good. Uh, so there are th three types of problems, general problems. One is that there is some force fields which is done with uh, for some package where you try to use with the other one and then maybe this is a problem, maybe this is not, and then there's a lot of confusion. One problem is that others, they do the parameters, they do the paper, whatever, they put them online, but then they are not the same what they actually use for one reason or another. Or then they put the parameters online, they just change them without telling anyone, which is confusing other people. So I will have like some practical examples of this. And then they, and I, I will quickly say what I think we should do. So this is classic charm. As we can order parameters of charm 36 <coughs> So this is what they show in the paper. Very nice uh, agreement up with the with the experiments. But then, no matter what you do, no matter what I have seen people doing, you always get bigger than in the experiment. So this, the here the blackest experiment. These are from a different <coughs> simulation package, <coughs> from different people, maybe a little bit different conditions, but they are pretty much in line with each other, but not with the experiments. There is, of course, the old version of Chromax is a different thing, but, but with the newer one. So, uh, consequently, I cannot, like people said, that charm gives you a good picture, good model of lipid bilayer, but I cannot, maybe in the, in the original paper it is, but I cannot do it myself, so uh, it's a bit annoying. <coughs> Other example is, uh, uh, or what is, or what is, what, what the amber, 
amber limit. So this amber, converting amber fast to chromax has been mentioned a few times and it's, it's known to be a little bit annoying. So what happens was that there was this model, there was this, at the time it was state of the art amber lipid model called Goff lipids. So then we transfer it into Promax, we run the simulation, we get the area per lipid of 6 to 1.6. In the paper they report 6 to 3.9. So it was, it was clearly more condensed. Uh, so we did quite a bit of work to try to get this right, we, we never managed. So then we concluded that, yeah, okay, it's the amber Promax <coughs> conversion problem. But then the same guys came up with the new model, and we did the, exactly the same thing. And then we got, we got 64.5, they got 64.6. So suddenly we were able to do it. I, uh, I don't know, I think actually probably that there was something wrong with the parameters delivered with this one, but it's a bit obsolete, it's not the, not the state of the art model anyway, but we lost quite a bit of time for this kind of thing. So this is, this is an example of of this tool, or either one, I don't even know. This is a little bit different, so this is a clear example where others share parameters online, which may not be that good. So there is, there's an, there are OPLS parameters, we call them macro based on the first names of the first others. So they have uh, parameters, for example, for POPS, available from this address, which we were using. So this guy, Thomas Pickups, well-known uh, MD simulation guy, he came, he wrote in the blog that, uh, so he took the parameters, he downloaded the parameters and took a little bit look at them. What he noticed was that, uh, so this is a real POPS molecule, you have a double bond in the SN2 chain. So he realized that there's double bond in the SN1 chain in, in, in these parameters, okay? So it's a different molecule. So they say that it's POPS, but it's actually OPPS. So they have the acyl chains are in the wrong positions in the crucial backbone. Yeah, well, then he, then, he, then he said that, okay, well, I will just fix it, and we will do it again. And then he did it, and then we had the POPS. But then I was looking at the figure, I was writing the paper, and I was looking at the figures, so then I noticed that if you look at this, so these are saline structures illustrated from uh, here, it's only a couple of forces that we have more. But there's, there's something different here. Uh, and after looking at the while, uh, you realize that this is a different stereoisomer than the other, other models. So this is, this is the L isomer, this is the D isomer, and this is what you have in the nature. So it turned out that actually in this file source, they had the initial structure which had the wrong stereoisomer. So then we fixed that one, but then, then there started to become more and more problems, so I, I'm not... <coughs> and the ion binding thing, so we did ion binding. We, we looked at the ion binding affinity against the NMR data. So we did this for CHARM 36 from CHARM in 2015 for the animal lipids 2 paper. We get way too much decrease in the, in the order parameters, all the calcium is binding. This is the calcium density in the water. So in 2015 with charm GUI, all the calcium is binding to the membrane. For a number of reasons, we did this again in 2018. We get the red thing, which is much less binding. We see there in the density profile as well. Now there's almost zero binding. So what happened between 2015-2019? So then we, I emailed to the Changui people and they told that yeah we added this uh, NB fixed parameter from Benoit rule in the in the parameter because calcium was binding too much. Which is fine. The problem is that they never told this to anyone. Uh, okay, solution. These this are like we all know this. There's nothing new. We all know that there are these kind of problems. <coughs> and, you know, it, it's, it's sort of, yeah. Uh, so what, what to do with this? Uh, so I think the animal lipid solution is, is, is to say that we should have all the data, all the raw data, all the steps from raw data to the man actual manuscript publicly available, which means that you could 
perfectly track the path from the raw data to the actual manuscript. How, that, how this can be done? So anomaly bits solution is to put all the things in the in the GitHub. So we have this kind of predefined uh, GitHub folder uh, uh, repository for the manuscript. So the idea is that we have one file where we always have the manuscript that is in text form, which is reading figures where the data is presented. It's reading figures from the folder of figures, so you know that you find the figures from here. This folder is reading the data, which is derived from the raw data, which is in this certain folder. And then we have the scripts, which is deriving the data from the raw data. Okay, so then we would have predefined manuscript folder structure. Everybody would know that you can find all these steps from here. Uh, raw data. Raw data is, uh, is more difficult because files are bigger, so we can put it in the Git. Yet, at least. Uh, so what we do is that we put it in, in, in Xeno. So, so now, when this is reading, roughly, roughly it works in a way that when this is reading, the data, it downloads it from Xenodo, so, so there are Xenodo links. So it downloads the data, it analyzes it, pushes there, so the data is not actually here, sorry. You never push the raw data to Git because it's too big. Uh, so, so all the data is in Xenodo. Uh, and then it's in the tables, in the papers for example, there's a citation to each, to each emulation we have. The citation takes you to Xenodo. Uh, sorry. Uh, I took a bad example, this picture. <laughs> but it, it doesn't matter. It's somewhere. And then we have this this I have this I mentioned before. So we then we have this index database uh, which 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 is collect which is also indexing this data. So there are these these lipids, so you can search the simulations of these lipids in different temperatures, and then you have a link. You can go there and try. This should take you to the to the GitHub repository which links to the raw data, and there's a script which downloads it and does the analysis. I would like to talk about this a bit more, but this is not reproduced this, this one session. So I wrote, I, wrote, uh, I wrote a short description how this works in the Google document, so you can go there and read it if you're interested. Okay, conclusion, so this open collaboration is, is, is good. It's possible to publish the whole progress of reproducing the of, of doing publications, which improves whatever you want to call it. I call it reproducibility, but it's actually something else. And we have this good database. Uh, we have animal lipids workshop coming in May in Berlin. So if you're interested, you can join. So open collaboration. I so this is completely done with Marcus Metten and with the other leader. Uh, these are the finding sources. And this, there, is, there are these carrier problems. It was said before that you might get unemployed, unaffiliated, stuff like that. I was like that a couple of years ago. Uh, but then Pavel Jungwirth uh, was able to convince that I should keep on doing this, and he offered me a very good opportunity to work in Prague before I got the Academy of Finland grant. Now I have funding for five years. Okay. This is not made this this bad. I agree with this. So thank you.